Well, welcome to Chase Center. I've been waiting seven years to say that. Can I say that again? Like, welcome to Chase Center. Uh, I'm Rick Welts. Uh, we're really pleased to welcome you. That was not fake footage. Uh, we actually had our employees and families and friends come out and uh, experience this last week for the first time. And yesterday we had 8,000 of our season ticket holders uh, come and walk through, which maybe is the most fun you can possibly have to see the looks on people's faces when they walk in here in Oakland. So uh, uh, it's been an amazing journey. It hasn't always been easy. Uh, Nothing is. A project this size in San Francisco is uh, daunting, but daunting. But uh, see, we're on the verge of cutting a ribbon in a couple of weeks, and uh, actually less than a couple of weeks, and the show begins. So, the project itself, obviously, Chase Center is the centerpiece of everything we're doing, but hopefully, while you're here today, you get a chance to explore uh, the entire 11 plus acre site that makes up Thrive City. Uh, two office buildings, 580,000 square feet, will be occupied by Uber. Uh, 3.2 3 acres of public space, uh, amazing. 100,000 square feet of mostly restaurant retail. Uh, just like Chase Center, those buildings are just getting down now. So this year for us, uh, around the outside of the building is really going to be what we're calling a year of discovery. So we have 29 retail locations. Uh, but those are starting construction today and over the course of the year. Uh, every time somebody comes back to Chase Center, there will be a new offering, a new restaurant. Uh, we've, we've, uh, we've already announced everything from Michael and Nina to Dots to a new 10,000 square foot warrior shop for your holiday, for your holiday gift giving. Uh, that will be open when the arena opens. Uh, the art is something that we're so proud of. I don't know how many of you are really art people, but hope you take the time today to really see uh, what's coming together here. Sam Whiting did a story in the Chronicle today on the Olafur Eliasson piece, our signature piece. We think this is going to be something that uh, when your friends and family come to visit you in San Francisco, they're going to say, we have to go see Seeing Spears. I can't even say it. Seeing Spears. So five 15-foot tall stainless steel balls with mirrored surfaces all arranged in a circle with the mirrors facing the middle. You have to go see it to really understand what I'm talking about. But, but as, you, as you walk through it, you see these infinite images, uh, something that we hope becomes the equivalent of the bean in Chicago. Also have an amazing uh, partnership with uh, SF MoMA, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. Uh, when you walk through our main lobby, you see the Alexander Calder sculpture that used to grace the lobby of the SF MoMA. We're pleased to have that on loan. Uh, the Gucci play sculpture uh, outside on our Esplanade. Two original commissions from SF MoMA that will uh, adorn our East Lobby, what we're calling our, our theater lobby. Uh, Sports and the Arts is an organization we work with to curate local art. We have 33 artists selected who created the original artwork that you'll see uh, around the arena today, the majority of those being uh, Bay Area artists as well. And we've drawn from the J.P. Morgan Chase collection as well to, uh, to create art in some of the uh, club spaces as well. Food and beverage, something I think is going to be one of the biggest changes in the experience. Uh, we love Oracle Arena for so many reasons. Uh, our ability to create great food is not one of them. We had one kitchen at Oracle. Uh, that's not an issue here. Uh, we we uh, have partners in Bon Appetit uh, that does the, the Giants Ballpark and Levy together uh, who've created a food program I think people are going to be excited about. We have great local brands, not, not big, big brands, but great local brands like I know you've had the chicken sandwich at Bake Sale Betty's or Taco Licious or Sam's Chowder House. We're bringing back Big Nate's Barbecue uh, and I'm forgetting a couple. But uh, I actually will say the early returns from season ticket holders uh, are actually two thumbs up for Bake Sale Betty's uh, and Hot Dog Pills for those of you who play golf at the Olympic Club. The, uh, the uh, hamburger and a hot dog bun, I think maybe got the highest ratings from season ticket holders yesterday. Um, the other thing that we did on the food and beverage program I think is really important. In addition to those offerings that are all local, 
Uh, we did a tastemakers program where anybody, doesn't matter the size of your business, could apply uh, and find a place in Chase Center. And we've chosen a lot of these very local, very small vendors. Uh, I, would, I would highly recommend uh, Yvonne Southern Sweets, uh, her cookies. She just makes cookies. Uh, they're going to be located in several of the locations around uh, Chase Center as well. Transit first. We're going to get tired of us saying that, but uh, one of the gifts of this site uh, really was the fact that there already, already was a mini stop located on the site, literally on our block. So uh, SFMTA just christened the expanded uh, UCSF Chase Center mini stop a couple weeks ago. Uh, now it's possible for four trains, uh, two cars each, to be staged at the same time at that station, especially to help people on, on, on egress. So we're urging everybody, I don't know if you've heard about it, we have some traffic issues in San Francisco, but we're urging everybody to take advantage of that. That's going to be enhanced uh, in January when the Central Subway opens. When that happens, uh, it'll be a game changer for fans throughout the Bay Area, because all you have to do is get on board Go to the Powell Street Station on BART. You don't leave the station. You change from BART to Central Subway. Central Subway comes down that same Third Street line, and you end up at that stop right outside our front door. Uh, uh, that's what they say. January. Bruce is a little skeptical. I can understand why. Transit projects being late. I don't know how you can how you can suggest that. Um, but a lot of other things too. Ferry. I talked to a couple of you about ferry. Uh, there will be a ferry uh, dock at 16th Street. 16th Street. Uh, we do have a little funding issue right now. Uh, we passed Regional Major 3 last November. We raised the bridge, to, bridge tolls. That money is going to dedicated transportation projects. The 16th Street ferry landing is one of them. That's tied up in litigation now. But in the interim, starting with Warriors games at Pier 48, uh, we're going to have the interim ferry service, so ferry will be an option. Caltrain is a nice 13-minute walk. Uh, if you have access to Caltrain, uh, bicycles and, and bike share, we have 300 dedicated valet uh, bike spots here, uh, and obviously bike share stations as well. And oh, by the way, I can walk from where I live, so I would highly encourage people who can walk uh, to walk. So yes, there's ample parking available and structured parking, Lot A, we have 950 parking spaces located below grade here. Uh, and people who come by car will have a place uh, to park, but we really encourage everybody uh, to use public transportation whenever possible. So that really kind of brings us to this building, to Chase. So the biggest decision you have to make in building a building like this uh, structurally is are you going to make this? Uh, a venue that can accommodate both NHL hockey and NBA basketball. Uh, that, if you know Joe Lincoln and Peter Gruber, was a very, very short discussion. Uh, this building is built for NBA basketball uh, and for concerts. And by doing that, uh, as I'm sure you know, the ice rink for, for NHL hockey is, is a much longer surface than what you see here, uh, which changes sight lines uh, for every seat in the building for basketball. And we made this uh, decision early on that this uh, would not be an NHL building. Now we can make ice, we'll have ice shows here, and if we can talk to Sharks into coming and playing a preseason game, uh, we actually on the retractable side of the arena could fit an NHL rank in here. But this is not what it's designed for. It's designed to optimize uh, sight lines for basketball. And I've talked to a lot of you since you walked in, and I think I hope we've accomplished what we set out to accomplish. The building is smaller, 18,000 seats compared to Oracle's 19,500 seats. That's a, by thoughtful design. Uh, we have one ring of traditional suites here. We actually have as many suites here as we have uh, had at Oracle. Uh, but 16 of them on each side of the arena, 32 total, are actually located uh, below uh, the seating bowl that you see here. So we have as many suites, uh, but we've actually been able to bring the lower bowl, uh, for the most part, even closer uh, than we were able to at Oracle. 
The thing I always say about Oracle, as much uh, as, as we love being there uh, and the atmosphere that was created there, I don't think it was the magic of the four walls of Oracle. I think it was the people uh, who were in Oracle Arena. Maybe one of the, the real success stories of this transition back to San Francisco is the fact that 70% uh, of our season ticket holders uh, last season at Oracle Arena have chosen to make the trip with us, which we think is a tremendous, tremendous number. And really be reflective that we have a uh, majority of the same fans here at Chase Center uh, as we've enjoyed uh, during our great run at Oracle Arena. Um, you're going to see everything today. Uh, I didn't really realize you're going to actually get to see the player campus. So you're, you're, that's the no camera portion of the tour. Uh, but you're actually going to get to see the player campus before a lot of our players get to see it. And that, that is really uh, a major investment here. So uh, our practice facility uh, is located right here. Uh, you'll, you'll see it's hidden away with two full-size NBA courts and tremendous facilities for the players to, uh, to enjoy. Uh, we also today moved our offices, uh, our business offices here. Uh, very unusual to have your practice facility here where the players can come to work same place every day, whether it's a game day or whether it's a practice. Same parking spot, same locker, same facilities. Uh, that familiarity we think is great. One of the things that, that we think culturally has been really important for the Warriors is having our entire organization in the same place. We had that in Oakland. Uh, at great expense, we've replicated that here. So all everybody who works for the Warriors comes to work at Chase Center every day. And I think it helps us all row in the same direction, all have the same vision, all share the same success. Uh, and it, it's meaningful to us to be able to, to recreate that uh, here in San Francisco as well. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, we want to show you our, our, I don't know if you noticed it, that uh, that scoreboard has more uh, surface LED space than, than any arena in the NBA, but it's not just uh, how it looks, it's uh, what it can do. So I'm going to introduce uh, the guy who heads our game experience team. Uh, he came to us a year ago from Madison Square Garden, a pretty good entertainment uh, uh, venue. And uh, without further ado, let me introduce Sean Ben. Sean, take it away. Hello everyone, thank you. Uh, thanks Rick, I uh, appreciate uh, the warm welcome. And I uh, wanted to just briefly give you guys a quick uh, intro on myself. Uh, as Rick mentioned, I came from uh, Madison Square Garden the last 10 seasons. I was here last year for the last season at Oracle. Uh, but, but this is my 17th season in the NBA. I started off with the uh, Orlando Magic and the Memphis Grizzlies. So working my way up to uh, now uh, the best team in the NBA. So, um, Wanted to just uh, talk a little bit about what I do in my job. I'm the executive producer of the presentation. And uh, what that is, is all the game entertainment, scoreboard operations, everything you see uh, non-basketball during the game. And uh, one of the things we want to do is not only become the best entertainment venue uh, in sports, but in fan engagement, but also we really want to become the premier destination for the basketball purist and someone who wants to, you know, enjoy the game and the statistics of the game. And I think you, you know, can see around the bowl right now that uh, this is sort of the, the initial layout of what we're looking at and displaying during the game. Um, we'll do this by creating, as I mentioned, the, the, ro the robust stat package uh, that allow us to com uh, complete the story of the game as it unfolds during the game. And what better way to do that than this incredible scoreboard uh, from Samsung? As you look up on the board, you know, we, we've got 82 feet, 9 inches by 52 feet, 8 inches. And if you, you know, know what an NBA court is, uh, you know, we're looking at 94 by 50. Pretty much consumes that whole uh, surface area there. The... Made up, it's made up completely of 15 displays. If you notice on this side of the board, we have the main center hung. There's some wedges there along the sides. Um, the halo across the, uh, the top with the game in progress stats. And underneath the underbelly, there's eight different boards there um, displaying the video of the game on, underneath on the big sideline boards. And as well as some complimentary statistics that go on above the board for our 
fan seated lower in the bowl there. It's made up of over 25 million pixels with a pixel pitch of six millimeters. Um, so if you, if you take a look up there, that's actually 75 million individual LEDs. So, um, Thrive City uh, Plaza Video Board is another wonder, really. We haven't really spoke about that. I'm sure some of you saw it on the way in, but uh, that board is going to be fantastic, really used to kind of, you know, useful content like uh, traffic and weather displays and really to help support uh, video during our numerous events in Thrive City. And as I mentioned, you know, we have an incredible amount of information and statistics for fans to see really at a quick glance. If you look around, I think that's one of the, the, the great things with this layout. You know, the corner boards, if you look up at the, at the top of the arena on either side, those have uh, a shot chart, a team shot chart that shows you exactly what's happening during the game. And when a player scores, uh, it will take over for, you know, see that individual's player shot and the location of the shot. Um, and you just, it'll, it'll be a, a, a great bonus for people to see that sort of um, in-depth look at the, at the game. And then, and then on the 270s, uh, you see the LED ribbons that uh, we have up here, they'll have our partners, and you see the, in the end zone here, the game in progress stats, along with the team stats. Um, one, thi one thing that's unique about this board, and I don't know, if, um, many of you probably know this already, it is retractable for a concert, so it will go up into the ceiling, and you see these, uh, we call a gantry, will close above it, kind of giving uh, some more rigging space for concerts, better sight lines, and, um, but with this design actually comes, um, there, there's these gantry boards on the either end, it's hard to see right now, I'm sure as you guys walk around, you'll, you'll be able to see there's two on the baseline and one long sideline scoreboard here, and we're gonna replicate most of the information that's on the halo, so it's being, uh, being able to be viewed in many areas there. The, I mentioned the underbelly uh, scoreboard, but on the center hung, we, we've got some pretty larger than life action that's going to happen in this uh, main display area here. And if you notice the four factors on top of the, uh, the halo up there, as well as underneath the scoreboard, um, those are important and really important to our basketball operations staff too. I think they're probably, as most of you know, probably the, the advanced stats that are the most um, you know, indicator of, of success during the game. So I think that's important as the, again, real fans want to get a, an idea of what's actually happening, what's the story in the game. Um, and I think those stats will be very unique. Um, another thing that's not pictured right now, but I think is a, is a neat uh, feature of the board, we're going to be able to show substitutions as they happen during the game. So when uh, a substitution happens for either team, you'll see a drop down menu come from above the, uh, or below the, uh, on the floor section where you see the starters listed and it'll have all the statistics that they have accumulated at that point in the game and you'll actually see their names flash with the person they're substituting in. So I think it's a clear way to really con convey who's coming into the game for each other. Um, so really all these boards make up a uh, video display package that's impressive in size and clarity but uh, tremendous. it's a tremendous asset to the presentation in general and I think we, this season, we're, we're really looking at um, and, and featuring this as the centerpiece in our elevated entertainment package. Uh, but there are some other uh, entertainment features and things that we're doing in-game that are worth noting. Uh, an enhanced co-ed uh, Warriors Dance Team program for select games this year. Uh, a new band, the Bay Blue Notes, who will entertain fans from the plaza to the concourses, kind of roaming around the arena, uh, performing in the stands, on the court. And a new voice of Chase Center, uh, PA announcer Matt Pittman from the Seattle Supersonics, where you got Raymond Hood. Um, and as well as the new fan supporter section modeled after those famous soccer supporter sections, um, with, complete with cheers and chants, and everyone will be having them rocking. We're going to be up in section 212 up there. Uh, and lastly, one other key highlight from our scoreboard package is a company called uh, Second Spectrum has a uh, interactive application uh, augmented reality uh, program that uh, 
allows you to kind of know the context of the game as, as it's happening. Um, it's really what it will eventually be is a in-game replay uh, in three different modes. There's coaches mode and player mode and fun mode. And these replays will, will feature things like the coaches mode will have the name of the ball handler following the player on the court and really see the game, how the coach sees it, how it unfolds, and helps you get smarter and deeper into the game. Um, you'll be able to see passes like visualized with dotted arrows on, on and off ball screens, visualized um, through the indication of orientation, screen, et cetera. It's a, we don't have any of those visuals quite yet, there's being under, uh, under development, but uh, I think it's gonna be exciting. Uh, new platform, and the player mode is actually going to show shot probabilities as they position themselves on the court. So as a player moves and becomes open, you'll see the percentages slide up and down, which is a pretty cool feature. And of course, the fun mode, we have something for everybody. You know, we don't want it just to be you know, heavy stat driven. I think for newcomers and uh, people less experienced, uh, there's going to be uh, mode that kind of is more for excitement as if someone shoots a three-pointer you might see the rim splash and uh, lightning bolt come down or something comes out of the floor with a three that's on fire. Think NBA Jam for those people who uh, played that video game. So pretty cool stuff, um, a lot of fun and um, you know we're really excited about this inaugural season at Chase Center in general and the new in-game experience for the fans. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, what's the way? I have like 18 more things they told me to say. Oh, okay. Great. All about. So excited. Lisa and Randy gave me like 200 things to say, and I missed a few. Uh, we focused a lot, obviously, on the Warriors today. I think over time, uh, the gift of Chase Center to the Bay Area is really going to be the entertainment uh, acts that he draws here. The greatest artists in the world have never been able to play San Francisco. And as you can see from our concert lineup already, uh, quite a range, Ariana Grande to Janet Jackson to Andrea Bocelli, uh, and especially these first two months are jam-packed. I think nine of our first 11 days of operation, we have a different concert or have concerts. So uh, I think, you know, I always talk about, and I bet you can too, I always talk about how people remember the first concert they ever saw. Think about it, like nine out of 10 people when I ask that question, can tell me where they were and who they saw. And that's what these buildings really do, right? These create lifetime memories. They, they shape, you know, I used to go to Supersonics games with my dad, which is where I fell in love. It was in a decade that started with a six, we won't go into that. Uh, but that's where I fell in love with the NBA and that's why I'm standing here today. So uh, the, other, the entertainment portion of this, I think, We've undersold to this point, and I think as, as the story develops of this building, uh, that, that's going to be uh, a really big headline. I forgot a couple of components. Uh, one is our gatehouse. If you walked in from the Third Street side, you saw this amazing architectural structure that completely encloses the plaza. Uh, all those restaurants that are in the first two floors of the office building facing the plaza have outdoor dining. The gatehouse encloses that in the way I feel makes it like a, a European plaza. Uh, also on one side of the gatehouse, we have the sweeping steps that go absolutely nowhere. Uh, there are Spanish steps that are a place to just watch what's going on on the plaza, maybe watch what's being displayed on the video screen or just watch the world go by. On the other side uh, is a glass enclosed television studio. That's where NBC Sports Bay Area will originate their pre-game, halftime, and post-game shows. So anybody who wants to be on a game broadcast on any given night can come on down and, and wave them on. Uh, one of the other art elements, this really will be the last one, I promise. Uh, we haven't really announced until today. Uh, we're going to be doing a Warriors Walk of Fame uh, honoring uh, the great names in Warriors history. We're going to start with six medallions that are embedded uh, in the promenade uh, that you'll see covered up today. You won't actually get to see them. You might be able to guess who a few of the names are going to be, but we'll leave that for another day. Uh, but the Warriors' uh, hope is that we can, there's quite a space there, we can continue to add names and, and medallions to, to honor the people who've really uh, created uh, the Golden State Warriors as we know it today. So with that, we're up to all. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Sean.
uh, Cow Palace. That was my first concert. Great women. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Philip Hastings. I'm with Event Experiences here at Chase Center. Uh, it's time for our tour portion. Just a couple of things before we go. Uh, my team will be meeting you at the top inside United Club as soon as we're done here. Uh, we'll break you up into groups and we'll walk you throughout this beautiful facility. Uh, along the way, there will be executives that will answer questions and have some great tidbits uh, about uh, Chase Center. In addition, Rick isn't done speaking. He will be out on the West Plaza uh, of Thrive City to answer any questions at the end of the tours. Please note, as you guys are walking, we're still almost just, uh, just under two weeks away from our first event. So there is some spaces that do have some work still going on. So just be aware of that. Uh, you're still under construction. And then, um, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and everyone would slowly stand up and head into the club.